started. Oh, gambit lever. Okay. Well, let's start off with the D4. I wanted to try out this um, stonewall attack. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I've had, um, I've played it a number of times and I've had some good luck with it. It's interesting that um, even when, um, even when black survives the initial attack, there is um, a good, interesting game to follow, a, a long game. It leads to long games. So let's see. So he moved the C pawn early and then exchanged it. So that's a standard response for the Stonewall. That's the other thing that's nice about the Stonewall for Blitz is that you can play these early moves pretty quickly. They're safe to play. And you just set up this pawn triangle. You don't have to play C6 until C4, or you don't have to play C3 until C5 is played. Um, so the question is, do I want to try and stop knight to b4 there? That would be kind of annoying, knight b4, really, because it hits this bishop. I don't want to leave the bishop on this diagonal, so let's stop knight b4. So that, that is out of the plan. And the plan is to set up this pawn triangle, play pawn to f4, and then knight to f3, perhaps knight to d2 sometime, and... Um, yeah, so I can get an F4 now. <clears throat> My friend at the chess club who plays this opening all the time, he often plays knight d2 before knight f3. I'm not sure about uh, these subtleties. I kind of like knight f3 and castling quickly, and then knight d2. But maybe knight d2 ahead of time. It, it stops a knight from landing on um, e4. Maybe that's the point in some circumstances. Here, knight e4 is not possible because I'll take it, but maybe after pawn to d5 you would consider knight e4 but here he's yeah he's not playing knight e4 in this case so i get my pieces out and of course the problem piece on this setup is going to be the dark squared bishop and i'm going to leave that for later that's that's the plan plan is to go quickly for a king side attack here and uh, only bring this bishop in when you need to or when the attack kind of runs out of steam and black has a very quiet setup. I'm not sure what his plan is. He's kind of got pawns in the way of both of his bishops. So I assume at some point he's going to have to play B or D, D5 or E5. And he probably wants to move the B pawn and put the bishop on that diagonal rather than play E5. So I guess D5. But maybe he's just going to keep these uh, pawns like this for now. Let's see, it stops me from playing knight to um, e5 myself, which is part of the plan, knight e5. Because you want to be able to get the queen over here, and sometimes the queen can use that f3 square. There's other ways to get the queen over here, though. The queen can get over via e1 to g3. Let's go ahead and play knight d2 now, though, before I start any queen maneuvers, see how he completes his setup. Yeah, I do have to, I guess that's the point of this, this kind of quiet setup from black is he's controlled a lot of squares that my knight might land on. So, so I can't play knight e5, I can't play knight to g5, well, except maybe as a sacrifice. That's interesting, you know, if I got my queen over here, oh, he got his, uh, he got his knight out of the way and he's hitting my d pawn. But so queen e1 meets meets the threat of taking the uh, e-pawn. And we'll see where he goes from there. Again, also play knight to e4 here. Since he hasn't uh, done anything, he didn't play d5 and he didn't play f5, so, so I have the e4 square I can use. And knight e4 would defend that pawn with the bishop. So that would allow me to place my queen out here. And um, yeah, I don't know how he's going to make progress. The knight on um, d5 is not hitting a whole lot. But, well, I have to figure out how I'm making progress, too. So <laughs> there, knight e4. Now my, um, 
my deep e pawn is pretty securely defended. This knight gets kicked, it can come back to f2 or g3. I have bishop to d2 and rook to c1. Yeah, he does kick it. Okay, so he's opened up those uh, squares around his king. The light squares here, so be interesting to see if I can exploit that. To land a piece on these squares, I would have to come from g3 or h4. g3 is not accessible right now. I mean, h4 is not accessible right now because the bishop and the queen are coordinating on that square. g3, he would pin it, probably. So I guess I'm going back to um, f2. Maybe um, king h1, rook g1, pawn to g4 is an idea here. So he decided to retreat his knight. So anyway, this is what I meant. You, you get this kind of long maneuvering game. It's, it's pretty closed. All the pieces are still on. There's only one open file, and that's the C file. And uh, neither of us has rushed to put a rook on the C file, so all our pieces are still on. And now um, I'm going to let that sit there and play g4 here. Just have to make sure he can't, <laughs> can't do something with that knight. <laughs> Letting the knight sit there is a, a risky choice sometimes. But he's opened up... Um, this square e5 for my knight and I also have the possibility of taking some pawns over here on the king side and opening up lines towards his king and of course my king is a bit exposed too so got to keep my eyes open but his light squared bishop is blocked in beside behind his pawn chain <laughs> so we have sort of mutually uh, complementary defects he has a bad light squared bishop and I have a bad uh, dark squared bishop And he has to think about what to do, what to do with this pawn. Um, I'm going to leave it there for a while. I could take right away, and that gives me a half-open G file that I could pile up on. But it might be good to prepare it a little bit first by playing something like knight to, um, knight to E5, looking at these light squares too. So knight E5 he probably takes, I take, then I have pawns on these dark squares. And... Uh, and I can think about what to do with my G pawn at that point. Pushing it forward to uh, G5 is an option as well. I think he's taking his time thinking about this position. Yeah, that's uh, what it is. It leads to this, this uh, <laughs> when you play in this style, it leads to positions your opponent may not be familiar with. And that's another uh, potential advantage for you. you get, if you play these kind of openings, you just get familiar with them. Let's see, can I play g5 without taking his knight? If I play g5, no, he can just take it. Okay, so he comes out with the pin. Yeah, that's a good move. Hits my, um, hits my knight. So I don't want to um, allow him to take there. I mean, uh, it looks like I, I have trouble defending that. So let's take this knight. Now he has to figure out which way to take. I didn't want to trade off his uh, bishop. I guess that was an option I could have considered. Knight takes bishop, but that just brings his queen over. And uh, that's a bit, a bit dangerous at this point. <laughs> I may not be well prepared to defend my king side. But his queen pops up over there. And also his queen over here helps him defend his king side. Hmm. He's got um, two choices, I thought. Well, maybe he's wondering if he should throw in bishop takes on f2. But, uh, yeah, that was what I was expecting. I was expecting d takes. Keeps the pawns over here. 
nearest king, you know, giving some counter pressure, giving some counter pressure against uh, my advances over here. Okay, so now things are looking a bit airy on the queen side. Things have opened up on the queen side. He's got the bishop pair. That is something I should consider. So I need to unpin this knight with something like queen to um, Yeah, queen to f1 or queen to e2. The problem is if I go queen f1, this bishop might uh, have difficulty ever developing. It's probably a good time now to uh, get this bishop out. Let's see, his bishop is, what can it attack over here? It's going to do the same thing as mine, I guess. It's, it has uh, can get behind this pawn. It can attack along this diagonal. But this opens up the c file for the rook. That's important. I can play bishop to b4, hitting his um, hitting his rook. I can play rook to d1 instead of putting my rook on the c file. I can put the rook on the d file, pin his bishop, and try and activate this knight. You know, I'd like to go queen um, f1 to h3, hitting his bishop, but. Um, that leaves my knight hanging, so that's not a good plan. So maybe just queen e2, and maybe pawn to g4. Pawn to g4 is now, pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop takes. No, it's, it's still not playable. So the combination of queen e2 and knight to h3 would allow me to play pawn to g5. Queen e2, knight h3, pawn to g5 takes takes and his uh, bishop is a little bit cut off and the pawn is supported by hmm yeah that's annoying <laughs> I forgot that uh, it's going to make it difficult for me to unpin my knight because my queen can't go to f1 or e2 now so what should I do I could start with rook to d1 Gives me potential discoveries like um, bishop here hitting the queen and the rook simultaneously. The queen moves and I take the rook. Um, untangling from this corner involves playing rook g2 and queen to g1, I guess. That's how I'm planning to untangle here in the face of this uh, bishop controlling the light squares. Wow, look at his use of the time. He's down to 42 seconds. Hmm. This is only move 20, and uh, you can see it's still quite a complicated position on the board. So, ah, hits the uh, queen, hits the uh, hits the rook rather. So let's think about this. If I play bishop b4 anyway, it is bishop takes rook. She takes rook. Yeah, that's no good. I have to move the rook. He just goes back. Okay, so let's start my unwinding with uh, rook to g2. And maybe queen, now bishop to b4 with a tempo on the rook and queen to g1. I have to uh, move the bishop because it's under attack. Okay, so I don't get a tempo. Let's play it there anyway. Ah, okay, so he goes there. So this is uh, unwinding just in time here. So let's think about it. Oh no, he can't go to that square. That loses the exchange. He cannot, he can go to um, d3 perhaps. Yeah, if he plays queen takes first, bishop takes. 
So do I want to take with the queen or the rook? I take with the queen, it defends this pawn and allows me to double rooks on the g file, so maybe that's good. And he just hits my bishop. Okay, let's go back here. I don't want to uh, block any of my pieces. So my idea is to double on the g file and then uh, take, take on f5 there. He's down to Black just <laughs> forfeits on time. He's down to just playing on the increment. Okay, I will uh, upload this and do a postmortem. See you guys later.